in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed listen I want you to understand covenants. So, watch this. Our forefathers, because when you understand the history of the continent of Africa, I hope you know that traditional religion was before the coming of Christianity. Do you agree with me? Praise God. May I announce to you that every tribe, every tongue, every nation in Nigeria was and is still involved in some level of witchcraft. Say amen. So the issue of saying, you, you are from this place. Your people eat people as if you are innocent. Everybody's forefather was an idol worshiper of some sort. I said the last time, it's just that others were more dedicated than others. Others were less as fair, but they were still involved. They were still involved. Are you getting this now? So that you have no right to point fingers at anybody. Say you are coming from this state. You are coming from this. We hear that your people do this. You're, no, you don't have that right. That authority is not given to you. Because everybody was an idol worshiper of some sort. Are you getting my point? Abraham was an idol worshiper when God called him. What could he have worshipped? Only idols. And when God called him, Jake, all of the people, the, as from Abraham... That was when they started understanding the person called Jehovah. Are you getting me now? He revealed himself to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and they continued with that revelation until the word became flesh. Praise God. Now, what does that mean? That tells you that our forefathers went to the gods that they only knew. And they, on our, see, in the village, they understand covenant very well. Are you getting my point? They go and meet these strange spirits through mediums, through priests. Is that true? And they say, okay, protect our land from war. It started during war. Because from Bible days till today, they've been fighting. People have always been fighting. So because of fear, the kings and elder statesmen went on behalf of territories. Are you getting me now? None of us here is from America. So you cannot pretend not to understand what I'm saying. Are you getting my point? Don't give me that face as if me, I was born, you were born in a plane, no problem. But when I finish this explanation, you will know that you must stay and deal with certain things and conquer it. Nazareth, where Jesus came, had a spirit that was manifesting. Nothing good comes out from there. Nathaniel testified that can anything good come out of Nazareth? Jesus had to exempt himself. Are you, are you getting my point? Are you getting blessed? Hmm. So, they went to these gods to seek protection, to seek prosperity, to seek fruitfulness. And all of this, this is what Satan wants. Satan always wants you to come to him. Declare your loyalty and then he will give you. See, that a man is rich does not mean it's God that gave the money. Satan makes people rich. Are you hearing me? Satan... Satan took Jesus to a mountain. He said, look at all of... He showed him the glory of the world in a span of time. He said, I will give you if you bow down. All Satan wants is the bowing down part. And our elders carried their heads on our behalf. We were in their loins. We all bowed our heads to these devils and idols. And they said, we agree. Protect our children's children. Because that's all they knew. Don't get angry at our fathers. To them, they felt it was the best thing they were doing. Are you getting my point? That's why when they came for war, you won't see barricade, but you enter a city, people will start slapping you till you go out. The protection, the altars were speaking. You get the point? 
You see a man moving. Nobody is protecting him. You try to touch him. Somebody somewhere because the covenant speaks. Are you getting my point? Ratified by blood. And it is renewed periodically. Usually, annually. People go and that's the whole idea of many of what we call traditional festivals. It doesn't matter if they call a pastor to say opening prayer. No. That's not the whole idea is a what do I call it now? A, a revisiting of these altars. Please get this thing. We're talking of the laws of victory. You must understand this story. Now, down the line, many of our parents left the village and they came to, they had the privilege to go and study in universities. They went abroad, you know. They did a lot of things and the missionaries came. That's why when the missionaries came to Nigeria, they brought the gospel, but they died. The demon said, you are coming to save people. Now, they knew that Jesus was Lord, but many of them did not understand the principles of the kingdom. As soon as they entered the land, they said, you want to stop this and that and that. The next thing, malaria just caught the man. They sent drugs from America, from everywhere. The man still died. And the priest who is responsible will just come out. Do you know how people in the village live old? 101. 114. No glasses. Ha ha. I remember you. Is it die now? Die. The man won't die. In other words, I'm alive. I'm watching. Listen. You keep becoming an inconvenience to generations. Everybody must send you money. You started the trouble. The children grew, married, had their children. All kinds of things go on in the village. And the reason for all of this, listen, the reason for all of this is, I shared it the last time, transgenerational allegiance. Are you getting me? This is what Satan wants. What did I call it? Transgenerational allegiance. Where one generation will now say, we are the young people now. We are bowing to you. And you buy into that generation. So, before a child is giving birth to, they are already covenanted to all kinds of spirits. You, you just get up and come and meet somebody. I like this girl. Oh. Pray, you won't pray. Be born again, you won't be born again. You just come. The day you say, I like her in the night, you just see somebody, you say, be careful. The day you ever come near that lady, she's my wife or she's this, and you wake up in the morning, you say, ah, oh God, I won't do again, no. The kind of warning. Listen, many people think this thing is not real. Let me tell you this night, except you are pretending. This is what has happened to many people here. You know, the church is a place of... We, 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 we allow suits like this to just make us lie over things. But tonight we're addressing issues. Some of you are going home after next week. This is the revelation you must take with this understanding. Some of you will be angry after today. And you say, so this is the mystery behind this lack of marriage in our family. Behind this, there are, there are cities that have what we call the cause of poverty. A professor will finish, retire, and go back to his village and be riding a bicycle. That's the covenant for, for violating this thing. There are many people like that. You see somebody who just leave London and say, I'm going back home. I, I like the village. Oh God, what are you looking for? Village that is room, 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 like shop. I like it. I'm still staying there. The person stays there until he dies. Education does not cast out demons. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Cologne and sure and smelling nice does not cast out demons. Good English does not cast out demons. I wish it did. Would have had less demons in our generation, but they are still here. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Tonight it will break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. It will break every chain. 
break every chain. To break every chain. Sing one more time with revelation from your heart. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Sing to break every chain. It will break every chain, break every chain. Let's just sing it one more time. There's power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. Satan comes to find expression there must be something that he can hold on to number one is a covenant hear me listen a possibility exists that you can become a victim of a covenant although you were not there when it was enacted were you there when Jesus died did you see him on the cross and even if you go to Jerusalem and cry in front of a cross you didn't see him but by covenant he brought you into it and is as real as standing there to an extent that Paul can say I have been crucified don't lie to us Paul where were you this is the power of a covenant footballers score and they say we scored were you there you understand covenant so here says how the Bible puts it as for me and my house we will serve the Lord that means somebody can say, as for me and my house, we will serve this shrine. Is that true? Did they call everybody one by one to say, Benga, are you interested? He said, no. Lillian, are you interested? Somebody went on behalf of a nation and entered a covenant. This is the predicament of the nation of Africa. And the kind of gospels we are inheriting from America will not deliver us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not criticizing them. We salute them, but there's got to be more. This is Africa. A nation that God, a continent that God desires. The whole eyes of hell is upon Africa. They know, they know that saviors shall arise. This is a mountain. That's why there's multiplied mysterious sicknesses and the rest. I will show you, listen, I'm going to show you certain revelations. And you will see why some sicknesses cannot be cured medically, no matter how you try, because they were not sicknesses in the first place. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is somebody getting angry tonight? So Satan must be free of whatever he can lay claim of in your life. Say covenant. Some of our parents, let's be honest, even went to an extent of inviting one baba. Tell the truth. Is that true? Some of you were small. You just saw somebody just come. They say, please give him a seat. Say, all right, everybody come. The next thing you saw something boiling, no fire. Ah. Who are you? Say, just sit down. Turn your back or remove your clothes. This one for husband. This one for prosperity. This one for that. Listen. Listen. Brothers and sisters, I want to, I can kneel down and beg you in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't you tell me that because you just said, I give my life to Jesus Christ, everything went. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Are you getting me? And I'm going to explain to you, that does not mean the Bible is, tells a lie when it says you are a new creation in Christ. I've taught you the structure of God's way of communicating. He speaks as though you have reached the end. It's not his fault. It's the way his nature is. He does not speak as if he's bounded by time. 
when he looked at Gideon, he said, oh mighty man of value, how long did it take until he conquered before he walked in that experience? I'm not denying that the word of God says this about you, but brothers and sisters, it will take the experiential application of kingdom truths. Otherwise, you will see it in the world, but you may never get it. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? I saw certain things at work in my father that I always wondered. I was always fighting with my father growing up. That's how some of you are. You just see that. What is this resentment between your parents and you? It's almost as if you are rivals. You cannot explain. There is a story you do not know. This is what I'm explaining to you. It's a cry from altars. A man marries a wife. One day he gets up and just looks at her and everything about her irritates him. Everything irritates him. They go to counselors and they say, are you looking hot? You too, help yourself now. She says, okay, oh, go and buy the clothes. The day she's wearing, the man looks as if he didn't see anything. <laughs> you did this for me, don't be stupid. Because these things are spiritual things. Some of us here, this is God answering your question right now. You, every time something good is about to come to your life, you say, okay, daddy, help me. There is a small competition. You find out that that spirit rises again. That's the day your father comes back angry. And he says, where, where did you say you are going? Lagos for where? You are not going anywhere. Some of you, it was when you started coming for koinonia that the war in your family started. You were minding your business for as long as you were not serving God, you were not serving, doing anything. You, one kind of resentment you cannot explain, brothers and sisters. When the Bible says kingdom shall rise against kingdom, your question should be which kingdom? There are kingdoms, there are thrones, there are dominions. They still speak. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know why they are speaking? You have violated the terms of that covenant. Because according to the covenant, the fraternity continues. Now, based on the knowledge of the gospel, all right, that you have had, you are now saying, I'm not bowing down to anything. Your parents told you, we are not going to any village, we are not doing anything again. These altars, as far as they are concerned, they have been destined to come and protect your family. Now they come and you are saying, Jesus Christ is going to protect my family. They say, okay, we'll see. So their goal is to frustrate whatever is not them so that you will return. You see it? That's why when things get bad, they say, this one that this leg is swelling up, you, where did you go, sir? You see, I was sitting down. They say, oh yeah, go home. <laughs> when you go home, the elder laughs. He gives you word of knowledge as you are entering. He says, I knew you would come. What is he saying? I knew you would come. And when you come, he says, why are you pretending as if you were not born here? You went to London and it washed away what we are, your fathers have been doing. And you too, you kneel down and say, Kai, I'm suffering this contract. Let me just do it. Do you know what? Satan hits you at your greatest point of desperation because at that point you can do anything. He won't disturb you until you get to 30 years. And then you say, are you really ready to marry? And some of our mothers will say, see, oh, let me tell you the truth. There's one story. I didn't tell you because you were very young. Just go to the village and marry in peace. Many pastors come and think that it's your caller that drives demons. I must marry this girl. She say, I have a bad history. I must still marry you. <laughs> the demons say, marry. Are you ready to take this? Yes, please. Hurry up. You just marry and you marry something else. The ministry dies. Everything dies. The woman is not bad, but a covenant is speaking. The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting. Who wrote it? When? Where did, what did they use to write the handwriting? And the Bible says, ordinance that spoke against us. There are ordinances that speak against people. I saw certain traits in my father. I hated it. But as I grew, I started finding it manifest in me. And I seem to be helpless about it. When I caught this revelation, I flogged it out with destiny. You know that song? I'll never let you go. It's not the song. It's what he said before the song I want to quote. He says, there comes a time. That's not what I'm saying. You think I cannot sing it? He says, there comes a time. Is that not what he said? In a man's life, when you have to do what? Just like Jacob and say, I won't let you go. This must be this your night. Don't celebrate Christmas the way you have been doing. There is no reason to celebrate when you have not dealt with what 
Jesus Christ came to solve. Many of us pamper Satan in our lives. You are not angry enough. I promise you, if you treat Satan as a gentleman, you will die like a chicken. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is, the Bible says, woe to them who are at ease in Zion. You must get angry and say, enough. Come on now. Enough. The day my younger sister was going to write exam years ago, she collapsed in the exam hall. What happened? Nothing. Brothers and sisters, covenants are powerful. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many of you, when you were not in Christ, you entered different kinds of covenants. I want to say something that will surprise you and I apologize. I'm not a law and a religious person, but I just need to put this because I'm talking about covenant. Hallelujah. Look at me. I want to tell you something that will surprise you. Do you know sex is a covenant? Look at me, please. Huh? Like I said, I'm not reminding you of your past or anything. No, I'm just bringing it to help you understand. Everybody say soul tie. Say it. Say soul tie. Listen. It's not about sex, sleeping with somebody. That's not what Satan is after. There is a law in the spirit that whoever you sleep with, you are one in the spirit. You become one with that person. Are you getting me? I know Nigerian films paint it very nice. They just show a romantic lady coming with her chest open and one guy like a sheep to the slaughter coming. But let me tell you the word of God right now, this night. That Christianity that you say, oh, I will serve God, but forget God is, let me tell you, sex is a covenant. Are you getting my point? And the trouble is, many of us, because of certain things, maybe our past lives or whatever it is we got involved in all kinds of things and then when we got born again we just said okay everything is over this is the reason why you will see a bishop who once was sleeping around or doing something are you following me now or a pastor or a, he was in the world drinking and smoking and he just comes and he says he's born again when the guy says he's born again he's standing and he's preaching and one day that altar strikes bam and the person gets up. He's still a man of God. Though. The next thing, he's scouting around for ladies. This is what? This is the predicament many of our brothers and sisters in Christ are going through. Hallelujah. Covenants. Number two. What gives Satan access? We have to hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. Have you gotten it? When, see, look at me. I'm one person who hates putting a law on people. When you impose laws on people, you make them religious. Give them the revelation behind it and they will comply accordingly. This is the mistake many parents are making. The moment the son gets to 13 years, they say, Samuel, come. They say, the day Hold your ears. The day I see any lady around you, that day, you will know I gave birth to you. And the guy said, what kind of embarrassment? You know, he's a teenager. He's feeling like he's a big boy. Ladies like him. See his mother falling his hand and embarrassing him. Hallelujah. And then they now preach. Don't sleep around. Don't smoke. So the person said, why? And they are not listening. Why? Because those who smoke, there is a name they give them. They are the big boys in the campuses. Why are you telling me not to smoke? Why are you telling me not to sleep around? If you explain the spiritual revelation, it will threaten you to obedience. You see it? If I ask you, sit down on this chair and remain there. After a while, you will be wary. I didn't tell you why you sat down. But if I tell you there is a lion outside, you are free to go. But this is the best position. Will you sit? Even if the seat is pinching you, will you stand up? Because now I've given you a revelation to sponsor your patience. This is the religious thing we do in church. We come and meet people. Don't do this as if they wanted to do it. 
You are seeing a lady jumping from man to man and she's crying. She came to you for counseling, say, man of God, I've been sleeping with everybody. You, you now join and slept with her again. And she went to another person. This is what a lot of people do because it's not an issue of psychology. This is an issue of spirits. Oh, let's pray. Father, I now release you in the name of Jesus. Go and prosper. And the demon say, let's go. <laughs> because it's not by grammar. Through the greatness of thy power, not your vocal composition, through the greatness of your power. You are going home. Listen, God is sending many of us as saviors. You are going back angry. Every time God wants to liberate a home, a family, he seeks for a man, an agent, an ambassador. I know that there are some of you who are already doing it. This thing is all, many of you right now, you are responsible. Do you know your prayer life is already, you are feeling the freedom already in the air, your family. It's just for some things to come in. And can I tell you, when it breaks, it has broken forever. For sure. This is the balance with deliverance. Many people make it look as if you should be in bondage when you are free. No, 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 no. When you are set free. For he who the son of man sets free is free indeed. But until then, you are in bondage indeed. Hallelujah. Goodness. Let's rush. So I've told you that, okay, covenant number two, yokes. Many of us don't know what a yoke is. A yoke is a self-imposed predicament. Self-imposed predicament by fraternizing with Satan. Personal self-imposed. Why self-imposed? Don't touch this. I yeah, must touch it and see what will happen. You touch it and your hand refuses to leave it. Yokes. Some of us, our stubbornness is what is responsible. The yokes on our lives are taller than us. The way we are standing like this. You are just standing alone. But the yokes that are on us. Because we are stubborn and rebellious to the ways of God. But tonight the Lord brings liberty. Hallelujah. Liberty. Liberty. Yokes. Hallelujah. Number three. Associations. Now, I know this one looks like a cool one. Wait till I finish explaining it. Associations. Look at me. Have you read the scripture that says what fellowship? Everybody say fellowship. Say koinonia. It didn't say what visitation. Are you getting me? So, I'm not saying you, you will walk with unbelievers. The Bible did not say what visitation. It says what fellowship, conscious fraternity with wrong people. Let me tell you something. People carry spirits and they carry presence. Jonah entered the boat. People, their whole life damaged. He came with something else. The ark came into the house of Obed-Edom. And within that small time, Jacob came in with a blessing from his father. And he caused Laban to prosper. Personalities have spiritual implication. Don't let anybody just come and hop in and out of your house in the name of solidarity with your village people. Send them away if they are not ready to listen to the principles of the kingdom. Because when Rachel went, she carried her gods. That's what the Bible tells us. When Rachel went, she carried her gods. Jacob, the husband, but Rachel carried her small gods. Everybody say associations. The Bible says what fellowship has light got to do with darkness? And what communion, two words, same words, koinonia. What communion has light got to do with darkness? It says come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. Now, many of you, look at me. Many of you have inherited all kinds of demonic things because of wrong and careless associations. And you say it does not matter. 
you have friends that all they watch is pornography. You go to their, their houses, they are watching hardcore pornography. But because of your solidarity to them, are you seeing? Your solidarity. I don't want them to call me holy, holy. I don't want them to call me this. And you get there. You can't watch those kinds of things and still be yourself because those things are transference of spirits. Are you getting me? You have a mind. You have a brain. It has memories. It can replay. It can fast forward. So you go and watch all kinds of junks. And you come back and you are wondering why every time you see every lady you are feeling like sleeping with them. Something is wrong. And you come for koinonia like this. The water of the world washes you. And you get up and go back. There are many of us, we, we entered wrong relationships because of our friends. They came together and said, you sir, don't fall our hand. This guy has been disturbing us. Let me tell you, straight to the point. If you are not bold to make a stand for Jesus Christ, you may not arrive at your destination. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Tonight's teaching may be hard, but let me tell you, God is speaking to us here. Break free from, from wrong associations. Love is a command. Association is not. It's not a commandment. Some of you still have bad friends. Terrible associations. You have, a, you have somebody who came to your room. Listen to me. And the guy said, sorry, oh, I don't have accommodation. Let me stay in your room. He's staying in your room. You come back in the evening and you see that a lady, he brought a lady in your room and he just laughed. He said, bros, bros, go and take fresh air now, I beg. And you are laughing. He I said, guy, you said, now I'll wow, 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 come back after one hour. You see that? Associations. Creating an atmosphere. I preached a message years ago called the law of atmosphere. Beans cannot grow on this carpet. True or false? You can't just throw beans and expect it to grow like that because the atmosphere is not conducive. Let me tell you the truth. There are many of us that need to go and destroy things that we are associating ourselves with. He told Gideon, go and destroy those things. There are, there are some of us, I've said it, our parents are born again, but there's one demonic bow and arrow or one kind of thing. It was, I'm not saying everything is bad, but some things were dedicated. You know it. You carry it and keep it there. Am I blessing you? I love you too much not to tell you the truth. Because this is what is responsible for the downfall of many families. Hallelujah. Families, listen. Those of us who are parents here, listen. Please let us help our children. Some of some families, even as see, this is not the thing of young people. There are families that are associating with wrong people. They are the ones that carry your father and mother to one so called prophet, and they did every kind of satanic thing. Your parents were working fine until some wrong associations took them to somebody. They didn't tell you. They went and they entered the covenant on your behalf. Associations. You must get out of it. Get out of it quick. Many of us who like joining clubs, Rotary Club is nice, but others that don't have names. I-40, you say I'm joining too. What do you know it is? They say when we join, you come and touch the table three times and you go. You too, you now carry your big head. You go and touch it three times. You see, let me tell you, don't, the Bible says do not be unaware, ignorant of the devil's devices. Is the word stratomai, his methodology. In the name of association, many of us have joined every kind of satanic sites online. I'm a member. I'm a this. I'm a that. They send you one envelope something. They say, okay, put the handkerchief here. Many of us, is associations that have made us to go and collect all kinds of things. Love portion. I hear they do it in Zaria City. When you rub it, it will make the, the guy. What if the guy is now more powerful than you? You don't know that he must have a repercussion. This is what you don't know. There's no free lunch with Satan. You will first eat. When you finish, he will tell you the bill. And you must pay. You must pay. So, when you say they gave me this to make this guy, ladies, hear me. 
Anything God cannot do for you, let it not be done. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Husband can come from marine spirits. Hear me. Children can come from marine spirits. A lot of people, a lot of people are in error and derision. Gentlemen, look at me. Let me tell you something. If your quest for money makes you to join all kinds of demonic associations, it will take you to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many clubs right now that are helping people to get money fast. When advent of, of everybody being a big boy, billionaire 23, millionaire 21, you too, you call me too, I must be before 28. Nothing is wrong with that. Except for the fact that when the quest for money becomes a desperate thing, they take you everywhere. They ask one wealthy man, they say, what is the secret of your prosperity? And he said something very scary. He didn't say, I read good business books. He said, I was in a certain place at a certain time. And in that certain place, there were other people like me. But I was the one who took the step they did not take. He said, that's the secret to his wealth. Will you follow that kind of person? What kind of scary description is that? You were at a certain place at a certain time. The fact that other people didn't join should tell you whatever they say they should do is scary. Sadiq Ibrahim, remember the gentleman that came here? They made him to sleep on a grave for three days. How many days? How many days? Many of us are willing to do it. He said three days is not better than 12 years. Do it. Do it. I remember Papa Akwami, they did. You remember one video we watched some years ago of one guy, one worry guy that used to be an armed robber. Eight years robbing people, nobody catches him. He won't run after when you are chasing him. You will just not see him. And what will happen to you will serve as a lesson. The next day you see him, you will leave him quietly. They can enter the bank. I mean it. They can. Ent they don't rob 10,100, uh -uh, 10 million, 5 million, 100 million. And this guy himself, the covenant is see, There are many people, wealthy people who are under all kinds of covenants. Part of the agreement is you don't help your family members or you don't help yourself. They are your uncles. That's why you can be dying and they won't help you. They are not greedy. They are under oath. Are you getting me? That's why the Bible says the blessing of the Lord. It make it rich. You see the sorrow part? That's what Satan cannot remove from your life. Mysterious livings. Your father just comes and says, all right, I'm going to have a personal room right now. Your mother says, after how many years? He said, you had me. Go and find another room. And the guy stays alone. You wake up in the night, you see him standing like this. Ah, daddy, what is this? Say, go out, go out, lock the door. This man is sweating for hours. Why? He said he must walk. This destiny must move forward. Be careful. What you call moving forward may be the biggest retrogression in your life. Whatever God does not give me, let me not get it. I won't get anything in this life. I prophesy into your life. May you not get anything in this life that will take you to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I am saying this because... Steve, right now, people are under pressure to prove to others they are successful. Every young man graduates and he wants to show that within one year, I bought a car, I bought this, and people are entering every kind of wrong, it's first associations that lead people into this thing. And they go and join some groups. They see a young man and say, you, how did you do it now? Now, how this one that you To an extent that many of our pastor people are already following it now. Are you seeing that? Because the price for laboring genuinely to get the true prosperity, the seasons of proving is very difficult and almost unbearable. So many people will prefer the shortcut and that's Satan's ministry to give you shortcut. Bow. You don't need to go to the cross. Just bow and take it now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mark 3.27. Let's hurry up. 
my spirit is fired up as I'm speaking because I know that this is what is responsible for the pain of many families. Many, many, many. This is the puzzle. Are you ready now? I want to share with you a powerful scripture. Everybody look up. How do you get out of these things? How do you get out of, how do you walk in the experiential victory? Number one, the Bible gives us another law. It says, no man can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then after he will plunder his house. So in every house there is a strong man. And the Bible says you cannot, the, the, the barrier between you and the things you want to take is the presence of a strong man. The word strong there does not just, it means strong to the degree that your lack of knowledge permits him. Are you getting my point? You must get this key. I'm about to release a powerful key and we'll pray. It says you must first do what? Bind the strong man. Bind the strong man. Bind the strong man. How do you bind the strong man? I will tell you. You don't bind the strong man by saying, strong man, I bind you. No. You bind the strong man through knowledge. Everybody say through knowledge. Everybody say through knowledge. You bind the strong man through knowledge. And the application of that knowledge. First, before any prophetic utterance. Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. One of the, mis the most misunderstood scriptures in the Bible. Matthew. Please let's look at it quickly. Shiba kapara kosata. Matthew 16, 19. Everybody read. It's projected. One to read. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Stop. So before we talk about binding and losing, what do we talk about first? Keys. Replace the word keys with principles. Ready? One to read. And I will give you the principles of the kingdom. It is by the application of those principles you bind and lose. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is what you must do that binds Satan. There is what you must do that loses your blessings. Many people just say, I bind, I bind, I lose. There is a place for prophetic communication. But before you talk of any prophetic communication, there must be a revelation, knowledge. Hallelujah. Very important. These keys are the keys of knowledge. I will give you the principles. This is what I'm sharing with you. Principles. When you know these things, you can keep Satan where he belongs. As a ministry, we know some principles. And our success is not, in, is not magic. You can be prosperous by knowing these principles. And your confidence will not be the prosperity, the, but the principles you know. Because there are principles that will be applied again and again. If you get blessed without knowing why you got blessed and how the blessing came, you will be afraid to lose it. This is why many people are not givers. Because they are not sure it will come again. Revelation makes you a giver. And I will give you the principles of the kingdom. And whatever you bind shall be bound. Whatever you lose shall be loosed. Everybody say revelation. Everybody say it again, revelation. This is what we lack. Revelation. What are the principles? For instance, look at me. I want to tell you some principles very quickly. Every time you find out that every door around you is being closed... You are neglecting the law of honor, which is the principle for access. Are you seeing that? Honor is the key for access. When you dishonor people, there are doors close towards you. Honor. Everybody say honor. If you want to receive the blessing of a father or a mother, what happens? Honor. And they will bless you. So he told his son, he said, go and bring me venison so that I will be pleased and I will bless you. Are you getting my point? Another principle. 
the principle of open heaven is tithing. It's in your Bible. Tithing is not the key for money. I've said this thing again and again. Tithing is not the law for money. Tithing does more than money. Tithing is the scriptural principle for open heavens. So that whatever is done under that open heaven prospers. It is when you are a faithful tither, then this scripture becomes real. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. Because you are now, if you give under a closed heaven, you are wasting your time. Are you getting me? There are many faithful givers who are not tithers. God is not just after money. God is after a pattern. He told Moses, he said, ensure that you build according to pattern. Open heavens. As a ministry, by the grace of God, we do not owe God one naira in tithe. We have been faithful to the latter. I told the finance department, it doesn't matter what collection we are collecting for what. God's 10% goes not forcefully, cheerfully out of revelation. And you will live as if Satan does not exist. Hallelujah. Honor brings you access. I shared with you my story. How that God instructed me to go to Canaan land. I've shared the story. And I carried a seed and I went to Canaan land. Hallelujah. They were here. I remember, I remember that time. I told them. I woke up in the morning. To go and ease myself and the Lord told me immediately, you are going. Without question, without arguing. Many of us see delayed obedience is disobedience in a measure. He said, Abraham rose up early in the morning. And when I rose up, I went there. I went to go and sow my seed. Honor gives access. And when that happens, I came out and I was going to enter the car for the driver to take me back to the airport. Let me return. And the Lord told me, come out of the car. He said, kneel down on this ground. I knelt down and I laid my hands. And he said, from today, from today, the city is open up to you. So somebody will be seeing our messages going around. You do not know that there are keys. You see that? That's why when you criticize a man who is blessed of God, whether you are right or wrong, God will first punish you before addressing the issue. Please, are you learning something? Prayer and fasting. Listen. Prayer and fasting is the key for a vibrant, anointed spiritual life. There is, there is the place of the word. But let me tell you, prayer, there are many lazy believers around who have explained away prayer and fasting because it's hard. They just kick it away. And they expect you will never forget about spiritual power if you are not committed to prayer and fasting. Except you want to go and do what a lot of people are doing. But I tell you, you want authentic power? Prayer and fasting. I told you prayer and fasting. I know we say it solves many problems. But from my Bible, prayer and so fasting only solves one problem. Unbelief. It exposes the atmosphere of your spirit. And helps you to comprehend the reality of the person of God. In a way that you can believe him more truly. Are you seeing that? So these are many principles. Many principles. Many. There are many more. Praise. Is one of the dramatic principles for the instant intervention of God. You know what? This praise that many people trivialize. Is it just dancing? That? No. No. Praise is a mighty tool for biblical spiritual warfare. Read your Bible. It was at the shout, the healer, all the instruments and the voices and the walls of Jericho. They didn't just fall down, they sank. Praise. Are you getting it now? Very powerful spiritual principle. Tonight, the Lord is going to set many people free. And many of us in turn will carry an anointing through this revelation and go back and set a lot of people free. Next year, hopefully, we will still talk about certain things. 
Very quickly, let me just share this. There are three revelations you must have to be free from all of these things. Three revelations. Number one, you must have a revelation of the finished work of Christ. You must, is compulsory. You must realize that you are only establishing something whose victory has been declared. Everybody say the finished work of Christ. Say it, the finished work of Christ. Because I must balance the part that I've been telling you now. A lot of us have been trained to understand as if let's just fight and see who will win. Uh -uh. Your fight is a fight of faith. And the fight of faith is taking the arsenals of the kingdom and enforcing the victory. Are you getting me? Say after me, Jesus died and conquered Satan. Conquered principalities. Conquered powers. And he has given me the victory. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says we are seated with Christ. Please believe this. You are seated with Christ. You must function from that platform. Are you getting me? You must function from that realm of truth. Although you are sick, you must believe that you are seated with Christ. The devil will say, if you are really seated with Christ, why has it not happened? You are going to apply the kingdom principles now and it will get him out. But it does not negate the fact that you are seated. Say, I'm seated with Christ. Far above. Say, he has given me a name. I am a partaker of his anointing, of his spirit, of his authority. He said, all power, all authority has been given to me. And he said, as the father sent me with the same equipping, so send I you. I, I had a revelation. I had an understanding that brought me victory. He's saying, I send you with it. Go and do exploits with it. So number one, you must have a revelation of the finished work of Christ. Number two, you must be diligent to apply the principles that cause the manifestation of whatever promise in scripture. You get the point? You must be diligent to apply. Every blessing in scripture has principles. It has your part that you will play. So it's not enough to say I've been seated with Christ. You must apply the principles. For you are only ready to judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 6. Just write it. We're out of time. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 6. You are only ready to judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. When Satan cannot find anything of himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The final thing is to realize. Please realize. That God is with you. I know this looks like a very simple statement. But I wish it was that simple. Moses understood. He said, do not send us from here if your presence. They just came out from Egypt. And he knew that these gods will come after them until the presence of God drives them again. In your presence, that's where I am strong. In your presence, oh Lord, my God. In your presence, that's where I I am seeking your face and touching your grace. In the cleft of the rock, in your presence, oh God, in your presence, oh God. Many of us will be delivered tonight once and for all. We cannot end this meeting. See, even if you have to go and set your family members free, you cannot set others free by being like them. 
you must first experience the liberty of the spirit this is a very serious moment hallelujah blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance please rise up on your feet give this moment every seriousness give this moment every seriousness I won't go back, I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed. Please sing this song from the depths of your heart. I won't go back. Say, Lord, I'm not going back the way I came to the way it used to be before your presence. More time. I will go back. I will go back. Can go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed. One more time. I will go back. I will go back. Can go back to the way it used to be before your presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Tonight's deliverance will be in this order. Number one, we are going to pray in tongues for five minutes. Hallelujah. Let the devil know you mean business tonight. Instrumentalist, you walk with me. Hallelujah. After you pray in tongues, we are going to pray. The devil that will not let you go this night has not yet come into existence. Are you hearing me? You will shake off these shackles once and for all. Are you ready now? Go ahead and pray. Instrumentalists, go ahead. Please pray. This is the last teaching service for the year. You cannot. You can't go back the way you came. Sekete on behalf of yourself on behalf of your loved ones there's victory here tonight at a platter of gold enough is enough Shackles of poverty, shackles of failure. Pray, pray in tongues. Just pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Tonight is your night of deliverance. Tonight is your night of victory. Your long awaited victory. Is here at last. Here at last. In this last teaching service of the year. Say, Lord, I'm tired. Do it for the sake of your generation. Do it for the sake of your children. Do it. Pray. Let the yoke be broken. Let the yoke be broken. Do it for the sake of your children. The children shall not suffer the iniquity of the parents. Don't say it does not concern me. Be humble enough tonight. Don't say it does not concern me. Don't say it does not concern me. Be the savior that will arise from Zion. Rescue the perishing. Be that agent of change tonight. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I don't just want to teach this. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Hear me, brothers and sisters. This is the explanation to many mystical things that are happening in our families. This is the explanation. There is a devil out there. And tonight, if you will only stand, you will be that savior. Please tonight, if it's for the sake of your loved ones, say, Lord, so this is why you brought me. I will pay any price to get out of it. Sister, this is the mystery behind your late marriage. This is the mystery behind the barrenness. This is the mystery behind untold hardships. Many families are going through untold hardships. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you are going to pray in one or two minutes. See, let me tell you, the way some of you are praying, let me tell you straight to the point, you are not serious. Are you hearing me? I'm not saying pray till you shout the roof, but some of us are just standing and strolling around. We are not playing games here, believe me. This is for the sake of your destiny. We are here to help you. But like a hospital, no matter how we try to help you, you must cooperate. Me, I'm angry. Oh. I've been praying this. Are you getting me? You must experience this liberty. Some of you have been trusting God for job since you graduated. All you think is that hard? Let the devil leave and see if the door will not open. Listen, hold on. Hold on. Oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. See, listen. You're going to pray. Right now, before I pray for you, see, look up. The Bible says, he that conceals his sin shall not prosper. I'm not just talking. There are things you know are happening in your life and your family. I'm not doubting the fact that you're a man of God. Are you hearing me? You are going to pray. Are you getting me? There are some of us is lost. There are some of us, whatever it is, you know that some of us is the cause of poverty. It's on our families and it's on our, everybody went to school, but they are living as if nobody has seen the four walls of a university. Let me tell you, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, if this is all we do tonight and you receive your liberty, this is pre miracle service. Are you getting me? I'm just doing my job to help you here tonight. But brothers, I want you to pray. Are you listening to me? In the next five minutes, you're going to mention those limitations in your family and say, Lord, tonight, this night, right now, lift your voice and pray. Lord, the wickedness in my family must stop. Pray it. Lord, the hatred in my family must stop. The unfaithfulness in my family must stop. Pray it. The unfruitfulness. Please pray. Whatever makes doors to close when it gets to my door, it must stop tonight. Doors of marital delay, they must be open. Pray. Whatever is responsible for my ministry not flourishing, pray, pray, pray. Ministry is not that hard. If you are struggling, something is wrong. Pray for your finances. Pray. Please pray. Mothers pray. Fathers pray. Pray. Forget about your neighbor. Forget about your neighbor. This is business tonight. Confront gates. Confront gates. Confront gates. Le koto prekete, ekreto shekete, 
It's It shall come to pass. The burden shall be taken from off thy shoulder and the yoke from off thy neck. It shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke can be broken. The covenant can be broken. The cause can be broken. Jesus paid the price already. Our job is to enforce it. For the sake of your destiny, for the sake of your children, break some circles. Break some circles. Enough is enough. Break some circles. Break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like you to pray. Every covenant or every ordinance, Lord, that is speaking over my life, whether I know it or not, every covenant that has come tonight, I confront it willingly, consciously. Lift your voice. I break it. Every covenant, every spell, every enchantment. Pray. A brocotto brecate, le brocotto prosa, a brocotto brecate, every covenant. Oh God, Jesus died already. I break it from my life. Shekete Rocotto brecate, I break it, oh God. I break it in the name of Jesus. I break it. Every covenant that brings loss, that brings failure, that brings hardship, that brings delay, I break it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I like the spirit in this place. Hallelujah. One more prayer point before I minister to us. One more prayer point. You're going to say, Lord, wherever I have given the devil legal access, let the blood speak. Are you getting me? Whether it's my mistake, whether it's my carelessness, let the blood speak. Pray. Let the blood speak. The blood can speak above every other blood. There's blood speaking in your village, but there is the blood of the son of the living God it has a voice it speaks mercy it speaks freedom it speaks liberty let the blood speak I plead the blood over my failures I plead the blood over my mistakes, pray. I plead the blood over my carelessness, pray. Whatever gives Satan legal access in my life and my family, let the blood speak. Let the blood speak. Higher. Let the blood speak. Let the blood speak. Tonight is your night of liberty. Let the blood speak. Satan cometh unto me and does not find anything of himself. 
let the blood speak against altars against yokes against covenants the mystery of the blood is the one last card that Satan cannot resist hallelujah 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 I'm ready to pray for you see some of you will be shocked tonight be, I know I, I, I prayed for people for, the, for deliverance and the rest many of you will be surprised tonight we have few minutes but we want it to be thorough this one is not for your family this one is for yourself if you don't believe it no problem we are not offended but for those who know that tonight must be this night hallelujah hallelujah tonight we are going to pray I cannot tell you the things I have seen from the time we began to pray brothers and sisters there are altars speaking against people there are altars speaking against people there are altars speaking some of us you know what I'm saying but tonight I hear the chains falling I hear the chains falling This is what I hear in my spirit I hear the chains falling I hear the chains falling Hallelujah. Father, whoever is delivered tonight, we put a barricade. It must be complete deliverance tonight. Deliverance with proofs that they will see in their lives. And my God, I pray that no one spirit will survive the fire that is about to be released in this building. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Take this moment very, very serious. I need all the instruments and everything that can come in. Hallelujah. Drummer, follow them. I need the symbols. I'm going to pray. I see altars. See, tonight is going to be a ministration of fire. Many of you don't even know what fire. Fire is not just for falling down. Hear me. Fire is a mystery. It's the manifestation of the spirit that separates, that prunes, that delivers. I'm going to pray. Don't, don't worry about how many times you have fallen. Tonight, it will happen for real. Because you have prayed it and because you are tired. And because God has commanded it, lift your hands, please. Hallelujah. At the count of three, I'd like you to shout the name Jesus. Once that happens, Steve, play. Everybody, play. Hallelujah. It's fire tonight. It will catch some of you, it will burn that chaff. Many of you will hear stories. Hear me we don't kill people but i tell you some people will have to give way this night for your destiny to be open oh for sure for sure for sure i don't care what needs to be happened what needs to happen tonight the door of your destiny must open are you ready now thank you father because of your anointing let it break yokes let curses and yokes be broken at the count of three are you ready now please shout it from the depth of your heart one two three out out right now i said altars on fire i said altars fire 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 let the fire consume 
every altar. Let the fire consume every spell, every enchantment. Bring them out. Bring them out. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. I set it on fire now. I set it on fire. I command judgment. 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 Let the right hand of God be stretched right now over your life. Hey, koto to teka, rete te 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 baka, mareko to so bariata. I hear the chains falling. Hey, I hear the chains falling. Lift your hands, please. We have to hurry up. We're out of time. Please lift your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to pray. It's a dangerous prayer. Hallelujah. It's a dangerous prayer. You just keep your hands lifted. I'm flowing as the Holy Ghost is. There are some of you here. I'm seeing you tied. This is what I'm seeing. Those people will be released right now. I'm seeing you tied. No, just, just keep your hands. At the count of three, the power of God is going to come on certain people. I'm seeing them tied. This is what I see in the spirit. Hallelujah. Father, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, at the count of three, anyone tied here, be released. One, two, get ready now. Three, receive it now. Receive it now. Be released. I release you now, 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 now. There are people tied. I release them. Be released now. 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 I command judgment. Whoever has tied you and tied your destiny. This night, I release the fire of judgment upon them. I hear the chains falling. Yeah. I hear the chains falling. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Goodness. We just have a few minutes. But lift your hands. God is delivering people from anger. Hear me? Anger. This thing called anger. When I pray for you, you will know it's a spirit. And it's not normal. Hallelujah. Anger. Anger. Many ladies will be involved in this. Hallelujah. At the count of three, all I want you to shout is the name Jesus. Follow me, drummer. Hallelujah. Anger is a spirit. It's a wicked spirit. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. At the count of three, my God, anyone under any influence of the spirit of anger, at the count of three, it will leave them forever. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Every spirit. Go, 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 go. God has not given us that spirit out of them. Come out. Come out right now. Come out of them. Come out of them. Come out of them right now. Come out of them right now. Anger goes. 
from your life. Hallelujah. Lift your hands quickly. We want to pray against the spirit of fear. Many of you cannot take bold steps. You are afraid of everything. You are afraid of failure. You are afraid of success. You are afraid of marriage. You are afraid to take steps. You are afraid of starting a business. What if I fail? That spirit must leave you this night. Lift your hands. Spirit of fear. Spirit of fear. Spirit of fear. Are you ready now? Lord, at the count of three, as they shout that name, Jesus, I command fear. Fear is a dangerous spirit. It must leave you right now. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Fear, go. 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 I command fear everywhere. The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. Go, go. Come out of God's people right now. The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. I cast it now. Hallelujah. Listen. Now I'm going to pray against the spirit of disobedience, non compliance. Man, this spirit must lead you to obey the principles of God. Are you hearing me? And I believe this should concern everybody. You should say, Lord, whatever makes me to find it hard to obey the principles of the kingdom, it must leave. Lift up your hands. Complete, prompt obedience. The Bible says his laws are not burdensome. Hallelujah. Shout this at the top of your voice. That name Jesus. I'm going to count five. At the count of five, I want you to shout it at the top of your voice. That name Jesus. And Lord, let every spirit that sponsors disobedience, rebellion, and hardness of heart, let it leave your people right now. Are you ready now? One, two, three, four, five. Every spirit of disobedience, go, 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 go now, now. Spirit of rebellion. I curse you, I curse you, I curse you, I curse you, spirit of disobedience, I curse you, I curse you, I curse you. I prophesy over your life. From today, in the name of Jesus, release this lady right now. I see you already in the spirit. Out you go. On your mark, get set, go. Out. Out right now. On your mark, get set, go, 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 go. Out. Out of her. On your mark, get set, out you go. Look, don't waste our time. Go, go, please. No manifestation. Go out now. Now. I 
I forbid every useless manifestation. We're out of time. Just go. Now, leave her. Leave her. Look at me, Usher. Walk with me. I said, leave her. Go. See, do you know why I say you should leave her? I'm, I'm, I'm flowing under a heavy unction. Just leave her. Let's continue what we're doing. Hallelujah. Prophecy does not reveal, it creates. Have you not left her? Where did she go to? On your knees and out of her now. On your knees and out. Quickly, don't waste our time. I gave an instruction on your knees and out. Many of you think it's out. That's how some of you get deceived. You say, thank you, Jesus. On your knees and out. Please listen. I pray right now. to speak over your life right now in the name that is above all names every voice right now that is contrary to Christ in your life right now let it be silence forever in the name of Jesus let it be silenced now in the name of Jesus. Let it be silenced in the name of Jesus. Let it be silenced in the name of Jesus. Every altar that speaks against you, I set it on fire now. I set it on fire now. Whoever is responsible for the predicaments in your life, I judge them this night. Every spirit that is responsible for poverty and failure, in the mighty name of Jesus, be free from it now. 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 Any other thing that ties you down, whatsoever it is, both for yourself and your family members, be released right now in the name of Jesus. Be released right now in the name of Jesus. Be released right now in the name of Jesus. In place of that cause, I put a blessing upon your life. Blessed beyond the cause. Blessed beyond any covenant. I bless you. Many of you don't know what I'm doing. Just receive. I put a blessing on your life. I put a blessing on your life. Let it create a garden of Eden. Everywhere you go. I turn things around. For your favor. I release favor. I release blessings. You are free. You are free. I declare you free. Therefore, whatever has not been working in your life, I command it to begin to work now. I command it to begin to work now. Whatever should have come into your life and is still pending, whether your life partner, whether your job, I pray that from now, to next miracles, this miracle service, within these seven days, may God do something that will surprise you. I said, may my God do something that will surprise you. The miracle is for the believer. 
the miracle is for the believer. Lord, in seven days, change the stories of men. In seven days, transform people in a dramatic way. May they return on Friday with fearful testimonies. Hallelujah. You've not given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not making any long discussion. I'm going to invite you to come. Please listen, this is a very solemn moment. Or you've given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself derailing, and you know that you, meet, you need to make it right with Jesus, wherever you are, whether inside or outside. Your salvation is the number one step to your total and complete liberty. And right now, as we begin to celebrate them, you've never made a decision for Jesus, or you are rededicating your life, please leave your seat and come out right now. Don't wait for anybody. You are the first person. Please stand up. Everybody keep standing. Let's celebrate them. God bless you. God bless you. Please don't sit back. This is the moment of salvation. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll wait for you. Koinonia, keep clapping for them. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. There are still more people coming. Don't sit back. Don't let the devil keep you forward ever, backward never. The devil will never take charge of your life. Jesus gives you a new beginning tonight. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother. Keep coming. There are people coming from outside. Keep coming. We don't care how bad it is. Just keep coming to Jesus Christ. For as many who will come, he will in no wise despise. Come. Keep coming. God bless you. It will break you free. Hallelujah. These three boys, you people smoke. You smoke all kinds of things, but you'll be delivered today. As you were coming, I saw it. They smoke this thing. These funny things, three of them. They are making a bold decision for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, thank you for this bold decision. Is that you? Come and give me a big hug. I'm happy to see you safe. Give me a very big hug. Bless you. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands to heaven. Lift your hands to heaven. Please, you are not reciting a poem. This is a very deep and serious confession. Okay? Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. From today, I'm a child of God. The nature of sin leaves me. And I receive the life of Christ. My name is in the book of life. And I receive grace to live a life of holiness and righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ thank you father for these ones you brought them by your power to preserve them I thank you because you set them free from every chain and shackle of Satan I break that addiction I break that addiction I break that addiction that addiction, it will never return in the name of Jesus Christ. It will never return in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me. Thank you for making this bold decision. Please just follow the ushers. They will have your details. Just turn. Where are the ushers? Direct them. There's somebody directing you. Just turn around and they will have your details in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you.